first of all, this had an object to add some glass to. So I'm going to press shift and then A, and then under mesh, I'm just going to choose monkey. Right now, it's a little bit low resolution, so I'm going to increase the detail by coming to this blue spanner called modifier properties, come to add modifier, then under generate, I'm just going to choose subdivision surface. Then I'll right click my monkey and choose shade smooth so it smooths nicely like this. Let's go ahead and create a glass material. So I'm going to left click the clock here and change the shader editor. Then I'm going to change from line style here to object and here I'm just going to press plus new. Right now though any changes I make won't be visible because we need to go into material preview or render preview. Let's go into material preview just now. So I'll left click this viewport shading and right now you can see our material is black which is an issue that you may face in Blender 4.3 or Blender 4.2. To fix this in Blender 4.3 just come up to render properties, switch from cycles to EV. This works fine since we're working in EV anyway but you can change back to cycles after fixing this later if need be. Then I'm going to left click this box beside ray tracing to enable it. Then I'm going to left click this drop down and then in Blender 4.3 come under fast GI approximation and change the threshold to 1. If you're using Blender 4.2 there'll be a setting under here called max roughness and if you set that to 1 that will also fix the issue. However if your material is still completely black this is a sign that your computer may not be compatible with these newer versions of Eevee in Blender 4.2 and 4.3 in which case I'd recommend using Blender 4.1 which is still a great version of Blender but you won't encounter this issue. Next up I'm going to come under transmission and here I'm just going to set my weight to 1. By setting transmission to 1 we've essentially turned this into a transmissive material which makes it like glass. You can see our glass is quite rough and that's because our roughness is set to 0.5 giving it this more cloudy appearance. If I set this to something low like 0 we will now have some nice see-through glass. We will encounter a couple of issues though in Eevee and that's that we won't be able to see through our glass. This will also apply to the material preview mode which we're in just now as well since this uses Eevee as well. I'll press shift A and then under mesh I'll choose cube. Then I'm going to press G to grab the object and Y which will lock its movement to the Y axis. I can then just drag it behind the monkey like this and you can see what I'm talking about here. We can't see the cube through the glass. To fix this is very simple. I'll just left click the glass monkey and I'm going to come to this checkered ball here called material properties. Then I'm going to scroll down to settings and here I'm going to turn on ray trace transmission. Now you can see as I orbit around my monkey with middle mouse button or by left clicking and dragging this thing here we can see our cube showing through our monkey. There is though something else we can do in this menu to improve the appearance and that's we can try experimenting between the thickness of sphere and slab. So let's have a look at slab and see how that looks. You can see this looks a little bit clearer now so I'm going to stick with slab. For the next part of the tutorial we're going to need to go into render preview to see things a little bit clearer. So I'm going to left click this option here to go into the render preview viewport shading. Right now we have nothing in our scene so we're going to go ahead and add an HDRI which will give us some quick realistic lighting. To do that I'm going to left click world, press plus new and where it says color I'm going to left click the yellow dot and choose environment texture. This will turn our whole scene purple which just indicates that there's a missing image. Here it's going to give us an option to press open which will allow us to find an HDRI on our computer. But you might be wondering how we get an HDRI in the first place. Thankfully there's plenty of great free options. I'm going to come to a website called polyhaven.com. I'll have the link to it in the description. Here you can see you can get loads of free textures, HDRIs and models which is pretty cool. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, it's just a resource I like to use a lot in my projects. Where it says HDRIs, I'm just going to left click browse HDRIs and here you have a large collection of things you can pick. I'm going to choose a nice indoor one. So I'll left click indoor and I'm going to choose this brown photo studio 2 which is one of my favorite ones. Since I already have this on my computer I'm not going to download it but you can see I've got it set to 4k and EXR and you can just left click this download button and it will add it to your download folder automatically. Once your download is finished you can go ahead and close this tab. Back in Blender here I'm going to go ahead and left click open. I'm then just going to come to my downloads folder here and in the search bar I'm just going to search for EXR since that was the type of file format I downloaded. You can also get HDR file formats as well for HDRIs so you can search HDR in here as well if you want to filter by those. Then I'm just going to left click my brown photo studio 2 and then I'm going to left click open image to add it to our scene. Awesome, now we can see what we're doing a little bit more. I'm also going to left click this arrow up here beside the overlays. I'm going to turn off the floor, the x and y axis, the 3d cursor and the origins. You don't have to follow along with this but this is just a great way for me to be able to see my object a bit more clearer. If you forget which things you turned off you can just come back to this part of the video and have a look and see which ones are turned off. Something you also need to consider for glass objects is whether or not it is a completely glass object or it's more like a hollow glass object. What I mean by this is if you were to crack this monkey open would it be completely glass inside or would it have a thick rim and just air on the inside? If your object is supposed to be completely glass you can kind of leave it like this. 
However, if it's hollow, then you'll need to add a bit of thickness to the edge here. Since we're able to see inside of our monkey, it looks a little bit weird without it. So I'll left click it, and then I'm going to left click this modifier properties option. I'll then left click add modifier again, then under generate, I'm going to choose solidify. Then what I'm going to do is left click this arrow and choose move to first. That way it's applied before the subdivision surface. To see a little bit better what's happening, I'm going to go into this option here called the wireframe viewport shading. Now you can see as I adjust, you can see it's creating a thickness underneath. I'm going to go for about 0.04 and see how that looks. All right, that seems okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into render preview. And now we have a little bit more realism with some thickness if we're doing this as a hollow object. We still have a bit of a problem though. Even though we've added some thickness to our monkey, we can't really see it too well as it still kind of looks the same. We also want to be able to see our cube through our monkey a little bit clearer, which would be a bit more realistic. We can do this using a few nodes. First of all, I'm going to press Shift A, then under Shader, I'm going to choose Mix Shader. The Mix Shader is another one of these shader nodes, but what it allows you to do is mix two other shaders with each other in order to mix two different effects. You can mix any combination of shaders, but we're going to be using the principal BSDF glass shader we've made alongside a transparent BSDF shader, so it makes it more see-through in certain parts. First of all, let's disconnect this BSDF from the surface by left-clicking and dragging the surface notch and pulling it away. Then I'm going to left-click and drag my principal BSDF and plug it into the second socket of our mix shader. I will explain why I've used the second socket a little bit later. I'll plug my shader into the surface and right now you can see it's doing kind of a weird effect. When I set this to zero, you can see our shader is completely null. That's because we have nothing in this first shader socket. And this first shader socket is represented with the number zero on the fact or factor. When I set this factor to one, however, it's then going to enable the second shader socket, which is our glass shader. And you can see our glass shader is now back to normal. This basic functionality is important to understand for what we're going to be doing next. So pretty much think of it this way. The first slot here is represented with the number zero on the factor. And the second socket here is represented with the factor of one. Anything in between that is going to make a blend between these two shaders which is why it created that dark grey glass effect when we set it to 0.5 as it's pretty much layering this black on top of our glass shader. Hopefully that makes mix shaders a little bit more easier to understand. Let's move on to the next step. As I mentioned we're going to want to mix in some transparency so to do that we can use a transparent BSDF. To do that I'll press shift and then A then under shader I'm going to choose transparent BSDF. Then I'm going to plug my BSDF into the shader. Now if I was to set this to zero you can see it's now using our transparent BSDF rendering our object in Invisible. But we don't want it to be invisible, we just want it to be more see-through in certain parts. And we need some kind of gradient depending on our view position in order to figure that out. Thankfully, there's a very handy node which allows us to do that called the Fresnel node. I know Fresnel sounds scary, but I promise you it's not as difficult as you'd think. I'm going to press Shift A and then under Input, I'm going to choose Fresnel. Of course, for any of these nodes, you can also search them by pressing Shift A and then coming to Search instead, which can be a little bit easier. I'm going to plug this FAC into the surface temporarily just to show you what this node does. Awesome stuff. Now you can see that there's these black areas and whiter areas around the outside. And you'll notice as I move around my monkey, this kind of stays the same, meaning these kind of darker areas tend to be in more of the center. But why is this useful? Well, if you remember, this factor here is controlled with zero or one, but zero and one can also be controlled with shades between black and white. So these darker areas are gonna be closer to this transparent shader because they're closer to the number zero. Whereas these whiter areas are closer to the number one, meaning it's gonna be closer to this glass shader when plugged into the factor. To see this in effect, let's plug our factor into the factor of our mix shader and then our shader into the surface. You can see we now have visible thickness and we can actually see through our monkey a little bit clearer, making a clearer image of our cube behind it. It's also highlighted kind of the jaggedness of this object, so we can go ahead and fix that by coming to our modifier properties and we can change our subdivisions to two in the level viewport. Awesome, that's looking a bit nicer. So this is already looking a lot better, but we can have even additional control over this for now using a color ramp. I know a color ramp might sound like a scary extra thing we're adding, but all it's allowing us to do is to have some more control over the contrast and how much transparency we want in our shader. So I'll press Shift A and then under Converter, I'll choose Color Ramp. Again, you can search for this if that's easier to remember. I'll then plug that in between the two factors here and nothing will change right away, but pretty much what we're allowed to do now is we can adjust this to make it stronger. To show you what this looks like, I can plug my color into the surface temporarily, and this will allow us to preview what it looks like. A color ramp at its default won't change anything, but things start changing when you left click one of these sliders and you start dragging them. Notice how I can make this black bit stronger by pulling it closer, which if I was to now plug this shader into the surface, you can see we'll have a lot more 
more transparency. If you don't want to do that, you can left click and drag this back and you can also mess with adding more of the principal BSDF back in by moving the white slider closer to the black one. I'll press Ctrl Z to undo those changes, as I'm kind of happy with how the default is looking. But I thought I'd show you that, just to give you a bit of extra control. And yeah, there are a few more things we can do with glass, such as making more realistic shadows with caustics and stuff. But for now, I thought this would be a great way to improve the realism of your glass inside of Eevee. So I hope you did find it useful. If you want to learn more about shader nodes in Blender, I do have a bunch of videos on the topic already, which I highly recommend checking out if you're interested. Apart from that, I'd like to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.